What veteran players lost the most value during the 2022 NFL Draft? All that and more in this episode of Locked on Dynasty Football Podcast. You are Locked on Dynasty Football, part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Here are your hosts, Marcus Mosher and Kate Madjuke. Welcome into the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast. I am Kate Majuk. You could follow me on Twitter at FFBallBlast. And as always, I am joined by my lovely co-host, Marcus Mosier. You can follow him on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosier. Of course, give the show a follow. We are giving you all you need to know about rookies, your rookie drafts, uh, which veterans are losing the most value. That is our topic mm. for today. We've been breaking down this stuff all week, so we cap it off on a sad note for some of these veterans who uh, got demolished in the 2022 NFL Draft. What's up, Marcus? Uh, that's a nice way to start off this uh, podcast. But yeah, we're going to be uh, talking about some guys that lost value. Um, Kate, we're going to do a quarterback and running back, wide receiver each. Let's get started with the quarterbacks because I've got a feeling you and I have the same name here. Uh, I don't think a lot of quarterbacks lost value. In fact, I think most quarterbacks probably gain value during the draft. But I do think there's one loser. And to me, it's Ryan Tannehill. Is that the name we that you We don't know. Oh, this is great. Fantastic. fantastic. Yes. Uh, I don't think Ryan Tannehill lost any short-term value. Because he's still going to be the starting quarterback at least this year. And frankly, I would expect next year as well. But the drafting of Malik Willis in the third round at least gives you the belief that the Titans are eventually looking to move on. I looked at the contract situation today. Uh, they can get out of his deal after this year. It's not super clean. Certainly after the 2023 season, Tannehill would be like 34 at that uh, at that point. He also Which lost isn't AJ too bad Bro for a quarterback. I yeah, it's not too bad. Um, but he also lost A.J. Brown this offseason, which that's the bigger reason why I'm calling him a loser. Now it's a rookie Traylon Burks. It's a Robert Woods coming off a torn ACL. Uh, Nick, uh, Nick, uh, Westbrook, they, they got there. The tight end situation is not great. I just – I didn't love Tannehill going into the draft, and I certainly don't love him now. Yeah, nothing, nothing trended up for him. I just – like I, I think uh, – you know, the only thing that kept me from from looking at Tannehill in terms of uh, being my loser in this situation was just the fact that I do still expect him to start. Um, you know, he's a quarterback that we've seen uh, have some rushing upside on occasion. And my only thought is maybe without some of these these extraordinary weapons to lean back on, Maybe we'll see him run a little bit more and maybe we'll see a, a little bit of resurgence because he had a, a very disappointing 2021. And I, I, I think this, the, the expectations from him yeah. are kind of low at this point to begin with. And, and I think that's partly what's going on here. There's just the numbers have really dropped off over the last couple of years. He really hasn't been able to replicate, you know, I mean, he was good in 2020. Don't get me wrong. But in 2019, he was far more efficient. Last year, 14 uh, interceptions. I think he's a fine quarterback, but it's pretty clear. I think the Titans eventually want to get better. Eventually, maybe. Eventually. We all uh, want to get better. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go with Marcus Mariota, who yeah. I was very convinced was going to get an opportunity to be a starter again. Finally, uh, after sitting two years behind Derek Carr, I thought this was going to be his moment to shine. I feel like we all sort of have this idea in the back of our heads that like Marcus Mariota has improved, um, but we forget he's only attempted 30 passes over the last two years. So yeah. like with the limited sample size, it's a little bit easier for uh, us to forget the trajectory that Marcus Mariota was on before he sat behind Derek Carr. In each of the last uh, five seasons that he was with Tennessee, uh, we just saw a continuous drop in his passing yards per game. Even in his best seasons where he threw for a 5.8% touchdown rate, Marcus, that amounted to 26 touchdowns. Yeah. That is the most passing touchdowns he has ever thrown in his career. Um, you know, in his last three seasons with Tennessee, it, not 
not good. No. Um, not no, good I, at all. 31 so, passing touchdowns, 25 interceptions. Um, there's just, there's not much data to back him up in terms of giving him another shot at that starting role. But I also think when we're looking at the quarterbacks that could have gone to them in any of these situations, Desmond Ritter comes out, you know, I, I've talked about him as one of my favorite, like pro ready guys. I think from a mental aspect, Desmond Ritter is one of the most pro ready guys in this class. And I also think just uh, physically, I think Desmond Ritter matches up with Marcus Mariota pretty well. And, you know, if you, if you want to talk about like accuracy issues and mm -hmm. stuff like that, I think he matches up with Marcus Mariota. So like, if I'm, if I'm, uh, you know, the Falcons, I'm just going to take my shot and start get my, my rookie quarterback in the mix. Yeah. The last time he started a game uh, was, it was October of 2019. And in that game, he had seven completions for 63 yards and two touchdowns. Like he just, it's been a long time since we've seen him start and play well. Kate in his last 20 starts. Okay. Last 20 starts. He's averaging fewer than 16 completions per game, uh, averaging only 7.5 yards a attempt, which is fine. But if you're just a low volume quarterback with middling efficiency and your touchdown rate's not very good and you're starting to throw more interceptions and the rushing production isn't as good because he's getting older. Plus, even with the, the Raiders, he didn't play a lot because he got hurt he, in the very first game against the Ravens. He had a long run, hurt his hamstring. And that was out for months. It's just, yeah, this one's tough. I think there was some reasons to get excited about him when the Falcons signed him, but he's going to be 29 this year. And yeah. we know that that's kind of the age when running quarterbacks start to drop off a little bit. Marcus, the last three seasons that he spent in Tennessee, he totaled just 10 total QB1 performances. Yikes. Yikes. Yeah. No bueno. I just think like if I'm the Falcons, um, I, I'm looking at Desmond Ritter as a guy that can instantly come in and compete uh, specifically with Marcus what, Mariota. Would it shock you if Ritter is starting by like week 10? It wouldn't be. It, it wouldn't shock me if he's starting week one. Like, yeah, so that that's kind of where we're at. I, I think people are going to want to draft him because they think he's going to get a lot of rushing potential. They're going to want to trade for him in super flex leagues, but I think this is a pretty volatile, volatile situation right now. For sure. Uh, but I mean, Marcus Mariota, clear loser. Yeah. Look at loser. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's, uh, let's take a break so I can tell you guys about Blue Nile. Uh, looking for some fine jewelry for that special woman in your life, but you're having trouble choosing. Blue Nile has jewelry experts on hand 24 7, available via phone or chat. To help you find a memorable gift at every single budget on BlueNile.com, you can easily navigate thousands of fine jewelry options at every single price point. And this Mother's Day, give something mom shall treasure forever with fine jewelry from BlueNile.com. And Locked On Dynasty listeners will get fifty dollars off five hundred. This podcast exclusive is good only through Mother's Day. Use promo code Locked On. That is promo code Locked On. We also want to tell you guys about Built Bar. Summer is coming, and you're going to need some snacks for the go. Bill Bars are the perfect snack to take you uh, take with you on family vacations, golf outings, or wherever. Uh, it's because they're covered in 100% real chocolate, and they are healthy. They have only 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 4 net carbs, but 17 grams of protein. Compare that to your candy bar, which has – or your favorite candy bar that has 240 calories, 30 grams of sugar, and dozens of net carbs in – Frankly, it's not even a contest. So go to built.com and use promo code LOCK15 to get 15% off your next order. Use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at built.com. Go check out some of their new flavors, including banana cream pie, raspberry, double chocolate, and so many more. All right, Kate, let's talk about some uh, running backs that lost value during the uh, 2022 NFL draft. And I've got a feeling we do have the same name for this one. I think we do, Marcus. And uh, do you want to say it or should I say it? Because I think uh, this is going to hurt a lot of our listeners here. Antonio Gibson running back for the Washington Commanders. I am so sorry. Come on down to mediocrity in fantasy football. Uh, or welcome back to me yeah, mediocrity back. in fantasy. Yeah. Antonio Gibson, I'm so sorry uh, to, to say this. 
Brian Robinson Jr. Uh, drafted by the Washington Commanders. I do think uh, yeah. points, uh, you know, if not, you know, uh, away from Antonio Gibson, um, it, I think he could be a viable threat in the way, especially on the goal line with the Commanders, if they ever happen to get there. Uh, I'm not loving this pick uh, just in terms of the, the complement of skills here. Um, you know, I, I think he's, he's going to eke in on the touchdown upside, which I think is really where we saw Antonio Gibson shine this year. JD McKissick is back. He is That's going to continue to eat me. into that receiving yeah. work, but, but, you know, at the very least, you know, even with, with JD McKissick, you could look and say, well, the touchdown upside is there. Cause Antonio Gibson's still going to be that guy that they go to, uh, for the rushing looks, but I do think that Brian Robinson, though I, I don't have him pegged for like 120 carries in his rookie season, I absolutely think uh, that he could be involved enough to take some of that edge from Antonio Gibson and uh, lower his ceiling pretty significantly for fantasy football. Yeah, and that's the frustrating thing here is because I, we, we already had to knock Gibson a little bit because they brought back J.D. McKissick, who had, uh, you know, what? 45-ish receptions last year. Last year, they played Jarrett Patterson, who had 68 carries. Brian Robinson is just a better player than than Jarrett Patterson. So he, I'm looking at, what do you think, 80 to 90 carries probably, and maybe some goal line work? Yeah, that that's where I have him pegged. I don't think uh, he's going to eat much into the, the receiving work. I think that's pretty safe here with J.D. McKissick, but – I, I definitely can see Brian Robinson eating into early down work. And that is the concern, yeah. um, especially if some of those early, early downs come on the touch or come on the goal, yeah, goal line. line. Yeah. And, um, and what's even... Ranked, ranked fi or third in missed force tackles last year. Um, we know that's a, a great stat for, for predicting what's going to come. He's just, he's a tough runner. Um, yeah. Seventh and carries of 15 or more yards. Like, uh, he's not necessarily a, a super speedy guy by any means, but everything he does, I think, complements things that uh, what the commanders have been looking for out of sure. Antonio Gibson. It's just not not good. Well, we should also mention, too, that um, Washington didn't draft an offensive lineman early. They traded down and they drafted Jahan Dotson. Um, they drafted a quarterback. They drafted Robinson. So. I mean, just from that standpoint alone, the offensive line is not very good this year. They didn't add anything up front. Uh, they lost Brandon Sheriff, their best offensive lineman, to Jacksonville in free agency. So, I would, I mean, I would assume Gibson's efficiency is going to go down a little bit. And when you add in the fact that they brought J.D. McKissick back, they brought back, uh, or they drafted Brian Robinson, and they added Carson Wentz, who is not a quarterback that likes to throw the ball underneath very often to running backs. There's reason to be concerned. Uh, right now on Dynasty League Football, Antonio Gibson is RB9. Uh, he's ahead of players like Derrick Henry, Cal, uh, Cam Akers, Dalvin Cook, Nick Chubb, Saquon Barkley, Alvin Kamara, Aaron Jones. And I get that Gibson's incredibly talented and he had 1,300 yards last year and double-digit touchdowns, but that seems rich for me, Kate. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure how long his value is going to stick that high. I have to imagine that we're going to be catching up here in terms of his ADP, in terms of his dynasty ranking. Um, definitely not not going to uh, continue to produce that highly. I just have so many red flags about yeah. Antonio Gibson. I did ahead of this draft. Uh, I I I didn't. I I I just feel bad because I was rooting for Antonio Gibson, but. I just have so much concern about the way we've seen them sort of pivot around his receiving ability, even though he's a converted wide receiver. Like, I just think that is the most bizarre thing. And I feel like when people talk about Antonio Gibson, nobody talks about the fact that they're like tiptoeing around the fact that yeah. he is a converted wide receiver. That should be what we see him getting involved in and, they seem to be wanting to get everybody but him involved in the receiving game, despite the fact that they had limited options. Like he should have had every opportunity to shine as a receiver last year. And yeah, they didn't and care they, to get him the opportunity. 
I, I saw Ron Rivera also said this week that he envisions the Brian Robinson, Antonio Gibson pairing to be like Jonathan Stewart and, uh, and D'Angelo Williams back in the day when he had him for Carolina, which, okay, great. But they've also got another guy in there that's going to catch a million passes. So I, I three headed see, monster. No, yeah, thank and, you. I, and I don't see this offense being maybe as good or as potent as that Carolina offense was. So we'll see. Uh, let's play a let's play a little game of where we're we ranking Antonio Gibson. So um, Austin Eckler or Antonio Gibson? Austin Eckler. J.K. Dobbins or Antonio Gibson? Oh, that one's hard. Um, yeah, I, I would go Gibson there. I would go Gibson there, but only for the fact, like, I need an update on this injury. Um, like, I, I they didn't draft like, a running back, which is good. It, it, that's great news for for Dobbins. They drafted one. Um, uh, yeah, but, I mean, nobody inside the top, you know, nobody inside. No, but uh, I, I still think that there's plenty of question marks about like the way that they've approached free agency. They had Melvin Gordon in, which I think that's a a signing that you don't necessarily make if you're prepared for a healthy backfield. Um, you know, I, I don't, I, we just haven't gotten any updates. And sometimes I worry uh, like this is the time of year where everybody's ahead on the rehab. Like Tyler, Tyler Beatty was the running back that they drafted in the sixth round. Yes. So. Thank you. Um, but like, this is the, this is the point in the season where we get those, um, those post injury hype posts where like, Oh, player X totally ahead in his rehab. Like he's running a million miles an hour and cutting great. Like, even though they just had their ACL yeah. surgery, like yeah. five minutes ago, nothing. like that's, and we have gotten nothing on JK Dobbins. And I just find that silence, like a little bit alarming. Um, well, so that's even my biggest question mark with JK Dobbins. It's not the, the team. It's not the efficiency. It's not the talent. It's, just a, those question marks about why we're not hearing positive things. And even John Harbaugh is like, yeah, we'll see. We'll have to see how they look like when we get into training camp. We're going to be patient with them, which indicates maybe they're not ahead of schedule like everybody else is. Uh, let's run through a couple more names. Uh, Derek Henry or Antonio Gibson? Derek Henry. Cam Akers or Antonio Gibson? Ugh, I'd take either. Gibson there. Yeah, I'll take Gibson. Dalvin Cook or Antonio Gibson? Dalvin Cook. Nick Chubb or Antonio Gibson? Nick Chubb. Mm. Kenneth Walker or Antonio Gibson? Ooh, Kenneth Walker. Mm, so you are, you are, way, <laughs> you have, you'd have Gibson like outside your top 15 then, which is, I mean, pretty concerning, I would think. It's, it's a big drop. Uh, yeah. And I, I, you know, is there a chance that we see some resurgence? Like, obviously, I, I feel like every single year there have been running backs that go into Washington. Like we were all hyped for Jarrett Patterson. Uh, sure. Thought he might be like, maybe Brian Robinson ends up being one of those guys that goes into camp and just doesn't make any noise. And, you know, the role is secure with uh, Antonio Gibson, but that's not where I'm projecting him. I think Brian Robinson is talented enough. Like, I think we might have seen some higher draft capital for him if it weren't for the fact that he's just being born out of a running back factory. Like, yep, I agree. It, it it's hard to get the touches when you're you're playing behind all stars here. So, um, it's tough. I don't know. It's it's tough. TBD, TBD, uh, man. All right, uh, let's talk about uh, losers at the wide receiver position. But before we do that, I want to tell you guys about Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source. For all of your betting stats and sports info, find all the latest sports developments, including league reviews and news this season, including this year's basketball playoffs, Major League Baseball, and this weekend's run to the Roses at the Kentucky Derby. Underrated sports weekend with the Kentucky Derby. If you got basketball playoffs, you got NHL playoffs, plus a fantastic uh, UFC card on Saturday night. So it's a great, great time to just hang out at your couch and watch TV all weekend. But Bet Online is your continued source for all of your sports wagering needs, including live betting, the playoffs, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet Online, where the game starts. All right, Kate, are you ready for my veteran wide receiver loser? I am. Uh, Chase Claypool, who announced the George Pickens oh, selection. Uh, <laughs> Irony at it. Because Pickens is 
kind of like Claypool. He's an outside receiver who is big. He's fast, who makes plays down the field. Uh, they also drafted the Steelers also drafted a, uh, a slot receiver in Calvin Austin, who is incredibly dynamic. They still have Deontay Johnson. They still have Pat Fryer move. They have Najee Harris. There's just too many mouths to feed in this offense right now. And I'm not sure Kenny Pickett's the guy that can maximize everybody here. So I think Claypool, somebody who not too long ago was inside the top 20 in dynasty rankings. I'm kind of out on now. I mean, I, I think that's uh, totally fair. I don't know how much noise George Pickens is going to make uh, year one. But, you know, I, I think things do depend on how we see the Steelers offense developed. We really don't know what we're going to see at all. We really don't know who's going to be quarterback. I'm just kind of puzzled, even as a Steelers fan, as to what we're going to see here. Um, but, I mean, Chase Claypool, he's a guy that we saw has a lot of uh, maturity uh, things that we need to to work on. He's still a young guy. He's still... Um, I think a better athlete than George Pickens, George Pickens still, we haven't quite seen the same George Pickens that we saw prior to his ACL tear. So I think if George Pickens ends up being the prospect that we saw early on and continues in that trajectory, absolutely. There should yeah. be concern, but I think overall, um, you know, if Chase Claypool continues to develop uh, in terms of his, receiving ability in terms of his maturity in terms of his understanding of the game he's got the better physical tools for me uh last year dynasty league football uh he was currently he was player 44 overall in december of 2021 right now he's 85th overall we there's been no games played basically from claypool since then the values just dropped like a rock i tried to trade him in a dynasty league yesterday i i said how one 112. So first the last pick of the first round. I tried to go up four spots to 108 and I offered Claypool in exchange. Owner's like, nope, no thanks. That's where we're at with value with, with Claypool. It's just, just people don't want them. They they just don't see the upside there. Yeah, I, I think that's totally fair. Um it, it's just not been a, a perfect a, a perfect last couple of seasons with with Chase Claypool, the situation's not great um, just across the board, no matter how things turn out. Um, I, I, yeah, I, I don't think we're going to be able to move Chase Claypool and Chase Claypool is unfortunately a guy that I have a lot of shares of. Uh, so, All right. So who do you got? All right. I'm going to go with Amonra St. Brown wide mm. receiver for the Detroit lions who just, absolutely balled out killed it in the last half of the 2021 season just absolutely benefited from volume didn't have a single game to close out the season last six games of the year where he had uh fewer than 10 targets like they made they made him the focal point they made him the star of the show but i do think that we have to be concerned uh you know pending the health of jameson williams that Maybe uh, Amonor St. Brown is a product of volume. He plays as a slot receiver. He doesn't profile as an alpha guy. Um, you know, I, I think his hands were a bit better last year than I, I thought they'd be coming mm -hmm. out of the draft. But I don't see uh, the pace for uh, 10 targets per game being sustainable heading into 2021. Uh, we'll see if Jamison Williams is healthy, but... Uh, you've got DJ Chark there and the the trade up for Jamison Williams. Like we've just heard nothing but fantastic things about uh, the Lions just being absolutely in love with Jamison Williams. Um, you know, he came out as one of the best receiving prospects in the class. And we might have mm -hmm. seen him be the the first wide receiver off of the board if it weren't for his torn ACL in the national championship game. I it, it, you got to be concerned. I think uh, if he's healthy and on the field, they're going to be feeding Jamison Williams. Absolutely. Um, and Amonra St. Brown might, might be a little bit of an afterthought moving forward. Uh, what's funny is right now on dynasty league football, Amon Ross St. Brown wide receiver, 34 chase Claypool wide receiver, 35 right hey. next to each other. <laughs> um, yeah, I agree with you. I think a lot of the reason why, 
uh, St. Brown produced so well last year is because there was nobody else to throw to. Now, you could make the argument, hey, if they have more speed on the outside, it's going to open up the underneath routes for Amon Ross St. Brown. And that that could be true. Okay, I would not be surprised if his efficiency goes up greatly this year. I think he averaged seven or 10.7 yards per, per reception. Could that go up to 11 and a half, 12? Sure. I, I think that's possible. I but think that's gonna, possible, but I think we're going to see a decrease in volume. That's gonna are we going to see 120 targets like we saw for him last year? Probably not. And I think I don't really think that's the way that Detroit wants to play. I think they want to play a very ball control style of offense and take play action shots down the field to Chark and Jamison Williams, and basically have St. Brown just be the chains mover, right? I, yeah, I, I think that's a good call by you. Yeah, so, unfortunately. All right, well. He's- he played well out of the slot. and He's I, a good I player. Don't say... We're not knocking his ability. He's a good player. No. It's just and a situation, like, right? Slot wide receivers can be uh, potentially you know, potent assets in your full PPR leagues, but just I'm tempering expectations moving forward, unfortunately. I, I 100% agree. Uh, all right. That is it for today's show. Thank you guys for tuning in. As always, you can download the podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Check us out on YouTube, Locked On Dynasty. We've got videos up there all the time. You can follow Kate at FF Ball Blast. I am at Marcus under, underscore Mosier. Enjoy your weekend. We'll be back here on Monday. Bye, everybody. Bye.